there are 20 things that we're going to be talking about the American bully that you need to know before you get one. Yeah, when I'm talking about exercise, I'm not talking about walking around the block. The American bully is a dog that needs to be exercised every day between 30 minutes to an hour. Now, there are a few exceptions. You got to realize that if you're dealing with puppies, you don't want them to be jumping because you could be hurting their joints or even their soft tissue. Also, you got to make sure temperature outside is above 85 degrees to kind of tone things down, maybe even wait until the sun goes down before you get them out. The other thing you need to be aware of is that American bullies can have high prey drive. This is why you must do your research as to where you're getting your dog from. If you can meet the parents, if not, at least buy from a breeder that's actually showing videos as to the personality of the parents. If you can, get out there and meet the parents. If not, ask the breeder to actually bring out a flirt pole and show it to the dog, kind of give you a little FaceTime or maybe a little video so you can get an idea how much drive you're actually dealing with. Some American bullies are actually going to suffer from skin conditions. Some of these skin conditions are actually genetic and it comes from actually being bred by man. In addition, others can be caused by allergies that are found in foods such as kibble. You may find yourself like I do feeding kibble during the winter and raw during the summer months. Also doing certain baths which we're going to touch up here a little bit later. So if you're buying your pups, say, in the summertime, it's a good idea to have the breeder show you the parents so you can see if they're suffering from any type of allergy. Passing gas. American bullies, they're experts when it comes to this subject, especially if you're feeding raw. So if you brought family over in the past or you bring up friends and you just started your dog on raw food or raw feeding, it might be an excellent idea to get your dogs outside. Your visitors are not ready for it. They particularly pass gas whenever you switch them from one kibble to the next when they're feeding obviously on raw and if they have anything going on with an upset stomach. Why are American bullies so expensive? Because people demand it. What else did you think I was going to say? People are attracted to dogs with a muscular build and a temperament that they could actually handle. Let's face it, they're amazing dogs and they're also trending upwards. So in a nutshell, demand. That's the reason they cost so much. Contrary to popular belief, American bullies are actually great with kids and with new people, as long as they've been socialized. So if you get an American bully, don't be shy to go ahead and put them on the shopping cart and walk in to say Home Depot or even Lowe's. Get your puppies to be sociable with other puppies, other dogs, children, adults. Get them out there and get them socialized. Ah, yes, color. The most popular color among American bullies on a poll that we actually dropped was none other than tri -lilac. Now, I know what you're thinking. I got many of you already looking at the screen and saying, what about Merles? Well, we're going to talk about Merles a little bit further on. Just know they're not necessarily a color. So by far, Lilac Tri takes the cake as far as the favorite color out there, as far as all colors. Now, if you were looking at two-tone, we just dropped a pole, and the winner of a two-tone color dog is blue. So they like the blue and white look. Now, this one right here, you probably didn't know. American bullies, by nature, are pretty curious. And you're probably wondering, so what? What does that matter to me? Well, it matters because if you have a pup, you better make sure that easy to open drawers are actually secure. They could easily access because they're that smart. And whatever's in there is going to go straight into the mouth. And don't think for a minute the same thing doesn't apply to adults. Little things like Legos, beads, or even coins that they could access in a drawer could be detrimental to this breed. So be very careful. doesn't matter if they're pups or they're adults. Make sure they never get access to them. This breed is excellent with kids and excellent with new people which is actually great if you get around a lot or if you have a lot of people coming over. Now that all the way around is a very positive trait within this breed. However, there's a negative side to that and I'll get to it here a little further. This is for those of you that have other types of dogs in your home. Keep in mind whether they're American bullies or not, when you bring an American bully to the home, if you have more than one dog there, they may develop pack mentality. Many of you are gonna tell me that pack mentality is nothing more than a myth and that has been debunked. All I'm going to say is make sure you check out our pack mentality videos. I beg to differ. As far as trainability is concerned, American bullies are easy to train. They usually pick up things rather quickly compared to other breeds. Now, obviously, this is a great thing if you know how to train a dog. I strongly suggest if you decide to get an American bully, to at least take them in to your local pet store and do your training classes with them. Basic training of an American bully or any other breed when they're a puppy and you first get them, will go a very, very long way for you. If in the future you want a show or you simply want to have a sociable dog, basic training is of the essence. I already know what you're thinking. I'm going to train my dog to be a good guard dog. And you may very well do that. 
But the breed as a whole, because of their good temperament around new people, it actually works against them as far as guarding property. Now, as far as guarding you and guarding you inside of your home, this breed naturally does that. So just keep in mind, if you want them to guard property, you're probably going to have to spend some money in training. American Bully Birthing is usually not complicated. This breed, for the most part, does not require a C-section. However, when breeding a female to a male that is much larger, you may find yourself occasionally having to do a C-section within this breed. Also, American Bullies as a whole are good moms. They tend to the young, clean up after them, and protect them. Even though they are good moms, I still recommend for the first week that you're around mom and the pups as occasionally they may lay on a pup. Nutrition and environment is of the utmost importance for the first eight weeks of life. This breed as a whole, as do many medium to large breeds, grows too fast in order for the soft tissue to catch up. We're talking about cartilage, tendons, ligaments. You have to make sure you got to keep the pups in the appropriate weight with the appropriate food so that you don't run into nutritional issues that can afflict the litter and it could actually cause problems and leave scars for that pup's life. Grooming of the American Bully is one of the simplest things. I mean, giving them a bath every two weeks or so, clipping their nails once a month, that's about it. They're a short-haired breed, but I already know what you're thinking. Do they shed? And I'm going to tell you, yes, they do. Even though the hairs are short and they're easy to pick up, they do shed. I get asked a lot, what type of food do you feed American bullies? There are people from the train of thought that you should feed raw and others that think you should just feed kibble. I myself feed kibble during the winter and raw during the summer. One of the most important things that you should never do with this particular breed is humanize. Now, I've always said, do not humanize your dog. I don't care what breed they're from, but particularly not the American bully. They're so willing to follow instructions for you and so trainable. It is really important that you do not humanize. When you humanize a dog, you're basically spoiling him or her and making them entitled. See, a dog doesn't understand entitlement like you and I do. The dog understands it as he or she's the alpha. If you want precise information on how to be an alpha to your dog, make sure you check out this video. It's going to break it all down to you. And it's going to teach you how to never relinquish your alpha status to your dog. Four steps to be an alpha to your dog. Let me introduce myself. My name is Raul. I'm the owner of QBN Kennels. I breed American Bullies, but what I'm about to show you today could be applied to any breed across the board. And never even give them the possibility. One of the most popular looks on our dogs is the Merle pattern. I call it a pattern because it is not a color. And Merle, even though it's beautiful and it's very attractive, you must be very well informed by running a genetic test on an entire litter and making sure those people that actually buy a pup from you have genetic proof as to whether their dog is or is not a Merle. I say this to say this. When two Merles are bred together, you can get dogs that are either deaf or blind. And therefore, it's the responsibility of the owner to not only test the pups, but also educate those that are buying from them. Also, be aware that not all registries actually recognize the Merle American Bully. And lastly, there's actually some medications that can make a Merle American Bully sick over dogs that are not Merle. Just keep that in mind. Lastly, I want to share with you that this particular breed is heat sensitive. Some dogs in this breed are actually brachiocephalic. All that means is the nose is squished in towards the skull. And those are more heat sensitive than, say, those that have a longer snout. This breed doesn't necessarily do well above 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Be aware of where you live and the types of activities that you're doing with your dog so you don't have a situation like this that actually happened to me recently. I can share with you that this is probably one of the hardest moments as a breeder that I've had. I think it's also important that we share the experience, how it happened, so it doesn't happen again. If you want to see what happened as far as the before, during, and how everything led up to what actually happened, go ahead and click on this next video, and I'll catch you there. Catch you there.